If you've been following this channel for a little while now, you know that predominantly a lot of the content that I put out is strictly PSO based, Fantasy Star Online. And a lot of it actually comes from the Affinia server, but there's one such Fantasy Star game that also had me in somewhat of a chokehold throughout my childhood, which is kind of flown under the radar for a lot of people, and that is Fantasy Star Universe. Now, of course, the game by Sega servers no longer exists. That ended years ago. But there is a dedicated player base and development team that run a server called Clementine. Now, in my opinion, I am very 50-50 on both Affinia, PSO Blueburst, and Clementine, PSU. I enjoy both games for very different reasons. But it doesn't take a genius to see that the player count in PSU isn't quite what PSO is. And I guess in today's video, what I wanted to do is jump into the shoes of a new player who is not only visiting Clementine for the first time, but maybe even PSU as a whole, and kind of answer the question as to why are people staying around and why aren't people staying around? What are the factors that are driving people away? And what are the factors that are retaining the newer players? Before we go ahead and jump into the video, my name is Deployable Lover. We make Fantasy Star Online content and now Fantasy Star Universe content on the regular. So if you enjoy this sort of thing, you enjoy Fantasy Star, leave a like, subscribe, and I'm sure I'll see you in plenty more. Now, as I spent time playing Fantasy Star Universe for this video, I kind of got a trusty little notepad and was kind of making some observations and making note of a few thoughts that I had whilst I was playing. And I guess this is going to be more of an open forum discussion as to kind of what my thoughts were at the time in the mind of a new player, if that makes any sense whatsoever. I guess it has to be said that before you even enter the game, and personally I experienced this, that there were a few hurdles that you might come across, mainly hardware-wise. A lot of your PCs and laptops that you're running now are far too powerful to be running a game like this, and there are far too many cores involved. So I actually had to install a um, third-party software called Process Lasso in order to turn some of my physical cores off on my PC to run this game. Um, that's not the same for everyone, but that was just personally my experience. Because I know what I'm doing and it's quite easy for me, it really didn't turn me off playing at all. But I can imagine if you're talking a newer player, just wants to pick it up, plug and play, that is a slight barrier to entry. I guess in any traditional sense of Fantasy Star, the first move is, of course, to spend an unholy amount of hours making your character. Now, I try to avoid this. I tend to play casts a lot in these games. I really kind of enjoy their aesthetic. I enjoy what they bring to certain classes. And I really like playing that kind of ranger role where I'm kind of not in trouble very often. I can just sort of shoot things and throw insults from a distance. I ended up searching for the best part of half an hour for a bald option for my cast, but it wasn't the case. So that really needs to be sorted because I really do feel like they're holding something against me there. I really do enjoy the fact that you can play around with a lot of the sliders. You can make like a real chonker or like make a real, real sort of muscle robot. I think that's really cool. When you are creating your character, you'll be playing around with all sorts of stuff, but like most notably is the voice lines because on the Clementine server, they're all in Japanese. So when you are testing your voice lines, they can go from like a really high pitched Japanese like girl's voice all the way to like a really, really deep, like manly broad voice. It's very, very funny. <laughs> And a lot of the time, the sliders almost seem reversed, like you kind of increase, which to me would increase pitch, but it actually lowers the pitch of the voice. So that was quite interesting to try and get your head around. After you finished faffing around with the character creator, which honestly is, is probably way more time spent than you should have done, you will be entered into the lobby, the main sort of central hub on the first floor. Um, and... It's, it's wonderful. It is a really nice, maybe that's nostalgia talking, but it is as far as PSO goes and its environments, it's great. It's got everything you want. It's well lit. The um, There's like kind of silhouettes of people sort of walking about to imitate um, a bit of a civilization. You've got to bear in mind that back then, the processing power of a lot of um, consoles, computers, wasn't really there, so they couldn't have like loads of physical elements walking around all the time. I guess it's fair to say that amongst all of the sort of shadows or like silhouettes of people walking around, you can't help but kind of 
instantly gravitate towards looking for real players and looking for real players on the server. Now, my experience with this within this video isn't a prime representation of what the server can actually carry day to day, just because I played it in the morning. Uh, when I was playing, I think there's about 60 people online, so not a massive amount at all. But truthfully, when you do get into the evenings, when a lot of the US servers a uh, lot of US players are playing. The highest I've really ever seen is probably 200, 160, give or take. So, you know, and that's kind of, I guess, from my perspective of being a PSO player, that's a, a mere fraction of what the Affinia server holds alone. Um, so I guess looking at that, it can be a little bit daunting for a newer player, thinking if, I'm, if I logged on at the same time that I did, at, I think it was half nine, you know, am I going to be the only one playing can i not find a mission and, and you'll see that that's a common theme as we progress on one of the more important things that i think i stumbled across inadvertently actually is the fact that obviously there is no real hand holding there's no like oh by the way you need to do this mission at this time it's only because i kind of have experience and i kind of know what i need to run and where i need to go um but ultimately when you're level one, you're limited to pretty much unsafe passage is probably the go-to. Um, but there is, you could probably spend the best part of a couple of hours wandering around, wandering into the wrong levels, wrong entrances, getting your ass handed to you by enemies that are far higher than you. So that can be a, probably a bit of a miserable experience. But um, for us, it was, it was quite straightforward, quite linear, because I kind of know what I'm doing anyway. Now, from a, a new player perspective, if you have, for example, dabbled in PSO whatsoever, when you go into PSU, you'll notice that a couple of mechanics are very different, i.e. you can now control the camera, which by today's standards, you're like, wow, that's really impressive. But actually back then it was like, this is a massive difference and really quite cool. Um, strafing, if you, for example, on the Xbox controller, if you hold down the left bumper, you can stray from side to side, um, thus making shooting a little bit easier as well. Also being able to ultimately have a saber and a pistol equipped and use them both simultaneously is, is really cool. You can kind of swap between two on the fly just by holding the right bumper, whereas in previous games, you'd physically have to unequip that weapon and equip a new one, um, which I think is a, a massive, massive focus for PSU. They kind of wanted to make it a little bit more accessible. As you're clearing through the very, very early missions of the game, uh, you'll notice that it is, I mean, there's no real challenge or threat. It's laid out like that, you know, on purpose. Your, I suppose your main role and main uh, objective at this point is to gain as many mission points and levels as possible. Mission points will allow you to then level up your class because your class has a level as, alongside your level and then you can ultimately aim for the higher classes which have better weapons better skills that sort of thing something that doesn't get credit enough in psu is the interconnected hubs of the world so for example if you finish a mission that you've just done with either yourself or a couple of your buddies that will then take you into the next area and a lot of these areas are connected via missions so there's almost like a risk for reward it is a very low risk but you know what i mean you've kind of got this sense of i'm going here if i'm brand new i don't know where i'm going to end up and you could end up somewhere completely new and i think that's really really cool rather than just returning to like a static hub now straight after unsafe passage it's again quite a linear experience you you know where you're going you're straight into um, when i went straight into fight for food and uh, didn't have any sense of oh i don't know where i'm going what am i doing it was very linear well put together you know if i was a new player coming into this i'd know exactly where i'm going and yeah, I guess the process can just continue sort of nice and clicky. As you start to play around, you kind of get to grips with, you've got a few different little bits on your action palette. You've got your goggles that can show you sort of hidden objects or it can highlight previously hidden objects that you can then break that have certain items in it or can help you clear a certain way. As you start to find those items, you'll be flicking through your action palette. And your action palette to me is probably one of the bigger changes in PSU. And I personally really, really like it. I know a lot of people have got different thoughts about that, but I really like the fact that you can just hold B, press up and down, left and right. You've got your monomates if you want them. You've got your weapons if you want them. And it is nice and simple. You're not having to, I mean, configuration wise on PSO, you know, you press, for example, like right bumper to bring up the sub menu, press Y, that will then bring up your items, your techniques, your weapons, you can then sift through that. Whereas they try and make that process really, really simple in PSU. I was actually surprised whilst I was playing this at some of the really early trap rooms. Like there's a lot of um, 
There's a lot of boxes and barrels sort of hidden around and when you destroy them, it spawns enemies around you, which I think was a really nice touch because like, I really hate when games kind of just go, oh, like this person's really new. We can't, you know, we're going to spawn enemies in that can't even breathe properly. Like, I really do like the fact that it kind of keeps your brain working to some extent. As you start to progress on in some of the earlier levels, you do start getting introduced into some different enemies. It's not one of those games where you're stuck in one level and you're fighting the same enemy over and over again for the best part of two to three hours. There are there, there is quite a bit of diversity, which I think is really nice. As much as my heart and soul will always be with PSO, I must admit that sometimes the movement in PSU can be really refreshing. It can often break that static monotony that can be PSO sometimes. I've come to understand that that's part of the game. That's part of kind of what makes it so popular. But other people looking in at PSO and going, well, this, this is crazy. You just stand around and press three buttons from time to time. If you if that sort of thing bothers you, then you can jump into PSU and be like, wow, this is like next level. This is kind of that halfway house between PSO2, New Genesis and PSO. And I think that's really important. There was a moment when I was recording this that I looked back at my notes and the notes quite literally just say viewing plaza. Wow. And what that means is when we finished one of the missions that you'll see on screen, we entered into the viewing plaza. And I, let me tell you now, I genuinely, no joke, sat down for a bit and just looked around. And I really, really am impressed about the visuals of this game on the basis that, I mean, when did this come out? 2005, 2006? So, you know, we're talking quite a while ago and it's very impressive. All I could imagine was sitting around with loads of your friends, people that you've met in the game, all chilling, looking at this sort of solar system as it sort of pans round. And you know, I've got a couple of clips that I'll, I'll put on the screen and it'll rotate as well. And it was just phenomenal. That's the first time when playing today that I've sat down and went, yeah, like I get it. I totally get it. Now, after entering the plaza, I just done the usual stuff, finished the mission, restock, and I was just on the way out to, to sort of walk out and find the next mission. And I was like, oh my God, there's, there's another player. Like, are, are my eyes fooling me? There is another player. So typically on the basis that we've seen someone else, it's only right to greet them in the only way that we know how as gamers. Um, that's that's wave at them. Um, it's it's not at all. It's not waving at them. It's, it's pretending to bum them from behind. Turns out after that interaction, they weren't AFK in the slightest. And uh, we actually ended up going on to have a really, really cool chat and throwing some memories back about... PSU and sharing some thoughts that actually the game does need more exposure and that was really really cool. One thing Fantasy Star does really well is the community. It is the passion that drives these projects. It doesn't matter if one person's playing or a thousand people are playing. The love for the game and the franchise is always there and that's so so cool to see. Wandered around for a little while, went into one of the doorways and had a distinct moment in my mind that I really should not be here. Like, really. Now, this, all jokes aside, is where I start to worry a little bit. As someone who isn't a new player, but is ultimately pretending to be a new player, this is a bit of barrier to entry for me, because I'm sat there going, well, hang on a minute, this is, from what I can see, the only door around here. And, like, why is this mission level 180? I'm level 4, 5, 6? Where do I go? I thought I was just traveling in, in, in one line. Does it not take me where I need to go? So I guess as much as I knew what was going on, for a new player, this could be very well where they sit back and go, actually, no, this, this probably isn't for me. I don't really know where I'm going, what I'm doing. Um, let's, let's just sort of throw in the towel. Alternatively, if they don't throw in the towel, then I guess the next step would be for them to go to the wiki. But at the time, and the time recording this, the wiki had ultimately shat itself. So the only other thing you can do is go onto the Discord and hope someone's awake to be able to answer your question. But otherwise, you're on your own, buddy. It is what it is.
Again, because I've got a bit of prior knowledge about the game, I kind of went about my merry way and actually visited the fifth floor of the Guardian's Colony. Now, that tends to be where a lot of, if not most of, the player base will hang out. And I thought, let's go and check what missions people are running. You know, a lot of people tend to sort of hang around by the... Um, by the quest counter there and let's just see if there are any low level quests that we can join and unfortunately not the case everything is pretty much s rank or above um now i i kind of knew that that might be the case but i guess if you are brand new into this game you're running around you've you know been passing people you're like well there are people here people are playing but a lot of them are either AFK, a lot of them are either running, you know, uh, missions which are uh, far, far higher than what you can do. Um, and I guess that can be a little bit daunting because you do sometimes feel like all I can do is run C rank constantly or revisit some of the older missions that I've already done because the newer ones are slightly too hard. At this point in the video, I figured it was worthwhile just having a bit of an explore at some of the areas as someone who is new to the game would do. So we went down to Param and we started to run Mad Creatures. And honestly, as much as I've run this mission, I've never actually sat back and looked at some of the, the terrain, the surroundings, the skybox, um, not to mention some of the new creatures that you actually get introduced to. And it is all really pleasant. Like if I wanted somewhere to just run and grind with no stress, maybe listen to something in the background or watch something. This is totally where I'd come. I love all the little interconnected caves and there are a lot, there are quite a few hidden areas actually that really you wouldn't even know are there without going out of your way, sort of off the beaten path, which I thought was really cool. Now at this point we are smashing through some of the levels. I think we've even got a level on our class for Ranger and you very much make your way naturally to Rathon Field Base. And this for me, uh, I guess it holds a lot of memories for me, but I think even as a new player, you could sit back and go, wow, this area is just immense. You know, you've got this really striking building that you are ultimately forced to walk towards. It's all built up and very different in the middle of this sort of wooded area. The music, the ambient sounds are really, really nice. And what benefits this area is there is literally two doors. There's like one which you came from, one which you can go to. So natural progression, you walk straight forward. Simple as that. Um, I really, really enjoy when games make choices as simple as that for people, especially early on. I get later on and, you know, make it as complicated as you want. But the the starter experience for new people needs to be linear to an extent. Now, again, flicking back to some of the notes, one thing that I did write down when I was in this area was nice, but very lonely. And I don't really think I need to add much more to that because that's exactly what I was thinking. It was like, this area is lovely, but it's also very, very lonely. The natural progression from here is to take on the D-Ragon, which apart from one of the seed bosses, mini bosses earlier, the D-Ragon is probably the first proper boss you're going to come across in PSU. Um, I guess my observations at this point are that the enemies are not only a bit more varied, but you're starting to step the difficulty up a little bit more. The resistances are slightly different, move sets are different, and not to mention that the boss adds its own challenge to newer players if you're not expecting it as well. And I do think, for what it's worth, that the D-Ragon is a really, really good introductory boss to the series. It's very classic PSO. The first boss you fight in PSO is a dragon, so therefore it would make sense that the second instalment in the series is also a dragon, which I really like how they've thrown that back. Now, strangely enough, whilst playing this, I was actually shocked that we got a rare mission. So uh, with a rare mission, if I remember correctly, you can take this to one of three locations. They're normally located on each planet. Could also be on the Guardian's Colony, not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure that was how it worked. I chose to run to Param and take the rare mission there. Now, I must state, if you get a rare mission, do not do what I did for the purposes of this video. Make sure you get four people. The reason why you want four people is because you get more experience, you'll get better loot, and more importantly, there are certain areas within that mission that you can only do if you have four people. There are certain areas that you can only unlock if you have four people. For the purpose of this video, I went in just by myself to kind of give you an idea, and uh, my god, the amount of experience you get from rare missions, I kind of forgot as I hadn't played this for a little while. But the rare mission experience you get is, is insane, the rare drops you get, 
are insane. And the mission points. I'm pretty sure, if I remember right, we've got over 400. I'm pretty sure I went from like level 2 ranger up to level 9. It was insane. Now, because we are geographically diverse, I didn't want to just stay in one planet uh, and just you know be that kind of guy. So we did have a little look around as well, went to New Days and kind of wanted to have a look around Otaku City. And I must say that it is definitely one of the more beautiful locations in the game as far as graphics will allow. It is the sort of place that you can imagine just sort of hanging around with your friends, shooting the shit typing yourself a few messages, having a couple of beers, whatever you want to do. It's definitely one of those one of those places where you could quite literally just let time fly. The next step of natural progression from Otaku City is to go into the Pavilion of Air. Again, this is where some of the enemies, especially if you are fairly new to the game might cause you a bit of trouble a lot of their move sets again are totally different they cast more spells um and also this is the first time i've realized for a, for a long time that uh, archers piss me off like piss me off so if you're listening to this bowmen that's what you are piss off just as a side note i actually if you are brand new to the game i highly recommend potentially considering a ranged class. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about too many of the techniques, i.e. the spells in the game, if you're not familiar with that. And you don't have to worry about being a hunter and being sort of too close and being smacked around by loads of enemies because enemies in this game do not stagger particularly well. Even off some photo art, photon arts that are designed to stagger, they don't always work out that way. At least as a ranger, you can kind of shoot from a distance and it is very, very simple. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff to dodge. There's a lot of stuff that can knock you down, kill you very early on. So if you want a bit of an easier time, in my opinion, take a ranger. So we clear through the first mission of the Pavilion of Air and you're then ultimately escorted into one of my hands down favorite areas of the whole game. This area is on the xbox 360 is where i used to spend pretty much all of my time and the reason for that is there was a mission that you used to be able to do called white beast and it would be ran relentlessly like you would never struggle to find a party it had these really cool like tables with like cushions around it that you could all sort of sit and people would like chat shit to each other there i'm pretty sure at one point like you used to sort of log in and people would be like, oh, I'll send you nudes if you can like carry me or get me a rare mission it was always a bit weird. But I mean, look, who am I to say? Um, but I must say I was really, really sad when I went into the mission counter. And actually, before we even did that, when you're actually in the area and you see no one there, like it's barren, like it's like a shell of itself. Uh, again, we played at a slightly earlier time. I get that. There might be a few more people in the evening, but it's not going to be anywhere near what it was. And then going into the mission counter and seeing no one running at all was a little bit upsetting. Because I'm a boomer that is fueled by nostalgia, I wanted to run White Beast anyway, because I think as a new player, you see a mission, you think, oh, that's kind of within my level range. We'll do that anyway. And I kind of selfishly wanted to do it. But I must say jumping into White Beast C rank solo at the level I was, which is, again, probably higher than what I should have been because of the rare mission, it was a miserable experience. Uh, it took so long, uh, not just to not just to defeat the boss, but to actually clear the mission. Um, as much as you're introduced again to newer enemies, you're now dealing with light attacks, which can confuse you. There's a lot of barter in there, which can freeze you at the same time. Um, some of the four-legged like rhino enemies, can't remember what they're called. They're just like so resistant. Um, I feel like that can kind of make you turn around and walk away. Um, I'm incredibly dumb and I just saw the whole mission through and killed it anyway, but it took me like way long. I just had to pretty much out heal everything. Um, but yeah, if you're a new player and you've got no friends around you and you've got no idea what you're doing, you, I think at that point you'd go, this is just way too hard. Like this is C rank. I'm supposed to be this level. I can do this mission. Why is it so hard? And I completely get that. And I feel like to further that point, 
the solo grind at this point is very much getting tedious. Um, as much as I really enjoy the game and I've got nothing but good things typically to say about it, if I was someone who was trying this for the first time, I'd be like, right, well, I'm now forced to pretty much run lower level missions or try and get a party on the Discord, which is a viable option if someone is free, depending on kind of where you're living. If I'm in the EU, a lot of people on the server are from the US and they're not available when I'm available. So it can sometimes feel like, right, well, my only other option is to run content that's a lower level than me that I've already done. So the cool missions with the cool bosses that are higher level, I can't do. Uh, and that can be a bit disheartening, honestly. Now getting to this point in the video, my natural progression would be to finish the last level on my Ranger, get it to 10 and move on to Forte Gunner. And I do also now have access to my SUVs, um, which aren't ultimately are not, not going to be shown in this video. But if you guys do want me to cover them, if you are brand new here, I'm more than happy to do that. They are probably alongside Nano Blast in one, one of my favourite additions to PSU. Uh, I really like the fact that you've got this like massive, it's, it's ultimately, if you play PSO, it's the same as a, a photon blast. Uh, it, you literally take damage, you deal damage, a bar builds up, and then you go ham. That's really cool. So that would be kind of the next step. The reason why I say that would be the next step is I do feel that for a new player experience, this would be more than enough to kind of give you an idea as to what to expect. And you, at this point, you're either sold or you're out. And I really do feel like that's the case. So to summarize my experience in the shoes of a new player for Fantasy Star Universe, I guess it's it's important that we break down the, the pros and cons. I don't like to use the term cons because it sounds really negative, but the, the fours and against, if you like. And I really do feel like PSU has some great foundations. Like, for example, the photon arts being added to the game. Uh, there are such an abundance of photon arts, all that have different levels and at certain level caps, a new move set within that photon art is then unlocked and you do even more damage. And I think that's really cool. As fantasy star players all we want is something to grind towards and i think that's ultimately what the game is so that's really interesting to see class levels are huge beforehand you would pick a class that's your class and you level that character whereas now as silly as it sounds if you wanted to be a cast but you wanted to be a force you can do that you might not be very good at it but you can do that if you want to rare missions in psu as you've seen can be incredibly fruitful and incredibly fun if done correctly and done with the right people so i really do like the fact that they are a solid staple that a lot of people chase within psu because it really does keep the game interesting the classes overall actually in psu are a lot more diverse and you've got a, a lot more options available to you as well for example one weapon that we don't see really anywhere else is the whip and to have the whip in psu and the crazy move sets that come with it i'm surprised that that particular weapon unless it is in ngs because i haven't played ngs but i'm surprised that wasn't actually fitted into the series more often the fact that the world is spliced together and connected by different missions and different zones i'm a massive fan of as much as i can kind of sit back and appreciate a lobby based system i really do like the fact that you can sort of hang out wherever i really do feel like that adds another layer to the psu experience the palette changes the weapon changes they make such an accessible difference to the game. Um, I, I know plenty of people, friends of mine, who have tried PSO and gone like, why is it so hard? To why do I keep going through the menu, going through the same thing? Why is there not just directional pads that I can press? I really like the fact that you just hold B, choose what you want to choose, let go, and it's done. We didn't touch on it much in this video, but I also like the fact that you have your own room, which you can pretty much do what you want with. You can decorate it, you can change it into a shop, you have a partner machine, also known as a mag, that you can feed and get certain benefits from. They made a lot more of an effort into the aesthetic um, drive of PSU over and above PSO. Now, without to sour it too much, moving into the slightly not as positive remarks of the game is... Again, coming from someone who is pretending to be fairly new to the game, there is pretty much little to no hand-holding from the game. Um, you're lucky if you can find someone else to chat to, whether it be in, on the wiki when it's working and the Discord or in-game, but otherwise, you are on your own, buddy. Not to mention some of the areas they kind of do flow, but then don't flow. You kind of get into the system of, oh, I'm going from A to B to C, and then it feels like you're going from A to B to Z, like in terms of the level ranges and... As much as it all connects together and it's really cool, sometimes you can be a bit like, well, surely the most natural progression is to go that way, and it's just not the case. This might seem incredibly obvious and incredibly silly to say, but the new player experience, I think, is massively hindered by the player count. 
nobody wants to play a dead game. Nobody wants to play a game that's got three people online and all three of them are AFK. People want to invest their time in something that is alive, something that they know they're getting something out. And ultimately, there's one commodity that no one can afford to waste. It's time. I'm hoping this video will reach enough people that people will start to potentially give Fantasy Star Universe a go. You know, it is the black sheep in the family alongside episode three, but we don't talk about episode three. If you can look past some of the flaws mentioned, then it is genuinely a, a really good game and it does deserve more spotlight than it currently has. Ultimately, to kind of top off the video and the segment, I feel like one of the biggest issues of PSU, not specifically Clementine, but the, the, the game itself is the fact that if you are a PSO fan, it is too much of a departure from original Fancy Star Online for you to be fully invested in PSU. And if you're already invested in PSO2 and NGS, then it almost seems like a massive downgrade to go and try the game. There is no halfway house. As much as the game itself, by components, is a halfway house, that that player base doesn't exist. You're either a diehard PSO fan or you're a PSO2 and NGS fan. And that's pretty much it. I really do hope you guys enjoyed this kind of insight into Fantasy Star Universe. As I said at the beginning, I, you know, I'm 50-50. I love the game. I love PSO. Um, I'm trying to be as unbiased here as possible, but let me know your thoughts. If you've got any cool experiences with PSU or PSO, let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like. Subscribe if you are brand new here. It's completely free to do. It supports the channel. It helps us grow and ultimately it does little things for the algorithm so they can sit back and go, oh, people like that video. Let's put it out to more people. I've been me. You've been you. Thank you so much for watching.